So we're now in week three of our event season of Waiting with Hope Through Dark Times. And this week's theme is Into Unknowing with a very striking image. So great, Rick, talk to us about this painting. So in this, um, in this image, uh, we have uh, one of the classic icons of Christ. You'll know more about this icon. Than, than you'll probably help to say a lot about but this, this icon. It's Christ the Pantocrator, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so the, this, this classic icon of Christ uh, that, I, that I screen printed, but after I printed it, whilst the paint was still wet, I sprayed water on it and the, and the image started to flow and disintegrate. Um, and then on top of that, I painted this uh, kind of great swathe of a, almost this kind of halo, and uh, and where he's holding the holding the Bible, um, uh, I scribbled over it that kind of uh, the struggle, the wrestling, the trying to work something out, and then mm -hmm. somehow that the, these kind of tangled lines that are all frantic and confused then kind of resolve themselves into into peaceful uh, a peaceful space. And um, one of the things that was going through my mind as I was making this image is that process as we journey through our, our life of faith, um, those moments where the things that we um, thought were solid, that we, we, we were absolute firm aspects of our belief and experience of God and our understanding of who God is, suddenly start to disintegrate. And I, it, for me, I, I, it comes every every few years. I, I, I think I've got finally. I've got it. I've sorted it. I understand everything now. <laughs> and then, and then, um, and then something starts to unravel, you know. Mm. And I think may, maybe, um, and I think particularly when when I was younger, in my late teens, early twenties, I had a very very particular view of the way what scripture was and, and what scripture said about certain things. And then, as I, the more I learned about that, the more I went deeper into prayer. The, these certainties started to dissolve, mm. and it's a really unsettling <laughs> moment. Yeah, really unsettling. But it, but, and while some people would frame that as as a, as, as a um, as a crisis of faith, actually, it's a growing of faith. Mm. You know, these are the moments where where we're actually, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is actually helping us to break out of, uh, of, of, of maybe a kind of conceptual cage we've made of ourselves, made for ourselves, and moving into a larger space. Like, it's like a snake shedding its skin, or, you know, uh, the, 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 we, we're too, we're too, we've grown too much to be held by this framework anymore. We've grown too much to be held by this way of thinking about God that has served us in the past very well. So it's not a rejection of that, but it's saying, oh, OK, actually, we can move and grow into a, a more expansive space. Mm. Again, it really resonates with the, with the theme of Advent, I think, with Mary. You know, so we you know, she's seen as very much an image holding on to the uh, Hebrew covenant. And then we've got the growing into the Christian covenant. Uh, so that sense of having to let go of things, almost getting out of the way of God, allowing for an open endedness for God to lead rather than, and I suppose that sense of letting go of the need to be in control about who and what God is, is part of the example of what Mary is and in what Advent is in a, in a kind of standing back and allowing God to be who God is is you know what i mean so and i love that the play that you've played with that image so for me the christ pantocrator is so important because it's like the image of fully god fully human uh, and yet still somewhat removed so you know so there's something about you know that mary has this promise which is the most impossible promise there has to be about about faithfulness to something that's completely unknown and and trusting god in it so i i yeah that there's some really deep themes there isn't there in terms of of um uh just about that relationship with god also i think it's really interesting what you've done there with the bible because i think the bible is possibly one of the most you no know, probably the most important texts we have but also mm -hmm. the most one of the most abused texts that we have so there's a sense of that you know this sense that sense of 
on knowing. And I'm also struck by what Ian has said in the poem, because I think he put, he emphasized blessed as the poor, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So there's that sense of, again, that sense of letting go, uh, of needing to be in control, having to have everything defined, everything certain. There's a sense of letting go of all that and, and the kind of spiritual freedom that comes with it. Yes. And, and, and you know, God, the great innovator, you know, the, 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 yeah. what, what, is, what is happening in the Advent story, something new is coming into the world. Yeah. And that's not just something that was 2000 years ago or however long, but the, yeah. the, God is this, this constant it, it, moment of innovation and newness that's, that's anchored. I mean, the, the, the ancient image is still there, mm. you know, so it's anchored in an inheritance. Yeah. But always in the process of becoming, always in the process of, of, of uh, dissolving and recombining and re-emerging with new shoots and new ways of being alive. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Lots of things to take into prayer. So thank you.